Good evening. Good evening. How is everybody doing? I hope you're doing great. I really hope you are. And I am back with more World Economica. World in Economica. If I'm saying that completely correct. And I definitely will be here for a while. As we continue to play through the playthrough that we started before. If you're watching the series via YouTube, uh, this is part two, so I greatly recommend you to watch part one if you have not already. And if you are not following or subscribe to me on YouTube, go do it. In fact, if you're here in the chat right now, if you type an exclamation part, exclamation mark YouTube like I just did, my bot shall give you my YouTube channel. So feel free to go and subscribe to that channel. I hope you don't get subscribe and follow confused. <laughs> anyway, feel free to do so. And I will be continuing on with more World in Economica. Let's load up this thing. Morning. The first thing I did was confirm that I could survive another day. I figured I'd inspect my things and decided to look for the bag I was clutching before, but when I realized it was gone, a shiver went down my spine. Okay. I then sprang to my feet, but when I realized I was in bed, I suddenly remembered what happened last night. This wasn't a booth in a dodgy internet cafe, but a house connected to a church, managed by a strange woman named Lisa. It had been a long time since I had been able to sleep in a place where I could stretch out my limbs. It wasn't so bad to wake up without being in pain. Good morning. You're up early. Still in the worn out old clothing I bro borrowed last night, I walked into the living room where Lisa was sitting in a corner with a computer. Looking at the book-like organic display, it didn't look like she was just messing around. Except for Sundays, I usually get up around now. I think it's rather impressive that you're that disciplined for a runaway. It's none of your business. Alicia shrugged her shoulders, turned back to, her dis turned back to the display, and hit a number of keys before standing up from her chair. Hey, it's Sonny, and thank you for subbing to the YouTube channel. Greatly appreciate that. Do you want breakfast? Judging from your name, from your name, your parents must be Japanese, or so you said. I wonder if I have any rice. Even with that said, I didn't really have any appetite. That's all right. I've got a chocolate bar in my bag. I want some coffee. Well, when I said that, Lisa looked surprised. Her beautiful almond-shaped eyes widened and seemed frozen in place. As long as my eyes have the black in them, I will always try to have three meals a day. Your eyes aren't even black. It's an idiom. I always looked away I looked away in disdain like a spoiled brat. In the end, Lisa prepared some bread, bacon, and eggs. A long time ago, the folks on Earth couldn't have imagined journeying beyond their planet and still being able to eat the same things there that they did at home. In other words, they imagined food to be some strange colored supplement in a tube with who knows what kind of vaguely food-like nutrients in it. Sure, you could find stuff like that, but immigrants were surprised to find out that things on the moon's surface seemed really no different from Earth. I didn't think too much about it. Do you have a net connection here? To me, a net connection was more important even than a silicon dioxide factory producing fresh oxygen. Theoretically, no matter where you were in this lunar city, you should be within a wireless signal. Or so the plan was originally. For areas where the cost-benefit performance of maintenance wasn't high, if the relay station broke, things just stayed that way. Besides, if you looked around, you could find public institutions with terminals free to use. So places with no wireless reception carved out the area like Swiss cheese. 
Thus, if I couldn't use the net here, I would have to find a place like the Big Bull Cafe again. However, I was hopeful because the computer Lisa was using was connected to the endless sea that was the net. What, are you some kind of net addict? Given that I also slept at that net cafe, I suppose you could say that I was. However, as I turned on my mobile PC, I was lost as to how I should respond. It wasn't against the law to say that I was trading stocks as a miner, or from that point of view, it wasn't a problem to just say so. The problem was that I was raking in the cash by normal standards. Even for the sixth outer section, this appeared to be a lower income area. Did the inhabitants here, inhabitants here earn more about 1,000 mules a month? 2,000 mules? Or better yet, did anyone here hold down any steady work? It wasn't very clear if this church had any money. A good poker player never shows his hand, or so they say. I should assume that they had some hidden away monetary reserves. I lowered my head like a turtle as I spoke. Something more important than even a name, perhaps? Lisa didn't even persist in asking my real name. At my words, Lisa's hand slowly stopped and she looked right at me. Looking at her calm but displeased face, I was ready to say that I was enraptured by the pursuit of money. It isn't anything illegal, right? And the words that came out after that were those that I was sure would let me off the hook. That is definitely not the case. You have my word. In that case, I won't ask about it. That was unexpected. Lisa seemed to mouth those words a number of times. She smiled in slight puzzlement as she spoke. Boys are creatures who die without secrets. In my heart, I screamed out against being treated like a child, but were my lips to move, I would sound just like one. I chose to stay silent as I logged into my trading account. Those thoughts had long since been expelled from my mind completely. My concern turned towards the up and down movements of digits and the flow of money it referred to. The market had fallen into disarray. One particular market on earth was shaken up and its repercussions were felt by the financial markets that tied the world together. Apparently it was something about Russia sending forces into satellite countries because of natural gas fields. Typical stuff. With the conclusion of the Cold War, Cold War, what brought the world together happened in an instant. After the panic of nuclear weapons in a small country in the Caucasus region, dubbed the Second Cuban Missile Crisis, mankind finally took a real look at the situation before them. Although the Cuban Missile Crisis was one of the actions that led to the end of the Cold War, it was also a confrontation between superpowers. In the Second Cuban Missile Crisis, it wasn't a confrontation between superpowers that brought the world together, but a confrontation between anarchic terrorists and the countries of the world. The result was the complete cooperation of the world and the desire to look toward the stars in preparation for another such moment. Everyone knew that there would always be disputes when it came to the utilization of land on Earth. These issues would be pigeonholed into a faraway place above and away, literally. With the development of the space elevator, major technological breakthroughs were made at breakneck speed during the development of lunar cities. All right, Slade, you get your rest. However, just as eventually all memories fade over time, the moon strayed from their original girl as the world's utopia. After being firmly established, much like countries all over the world, it sought sovereignty and independence to the extent of maintaining its own independent military force. Thus, the countries on Earth turned their gaze from the sky to the ground again, having been awoken from their dream. This was the gist of what I understood about the history of the world. I knew more minute details beyond this, but delving too deep would make it difficult to see the big picture. My knowledge was entirely tied to stock trading after all. If there were to be a disturbance in some region of some country on Earth, it would probably have a large impact on the people who live there and the corporations which operated there, but it would have little global impact. And because there'd be little global impact, tragedies would continue on Earth. This was something that immigrants from my town, who were coming from particularly dreadful places on Earth, had said. 
which had left the biggest impression in my mind. Looking down at the earth from the space elevator, I could see that all the dreadful problems out there grew smaller and smaller, much like the place of my birth. Even to this day, there were places on earth where missiles fell more than rain did. There was a rise in the number of unskilled laborers wanting to come to the moon, especially those who no longer wanted to live on Mother Earth anymore. The real kicker was that the people on the developed world seemed to know absolutely nothing about the world outside of their borders. Here, everyone more or less knew about these rising problems. When it came to this energetic bunch and their stubbornly resolute mindset, what was hidden eventually became known. Their mantra was, we will not allow this to become another Earth. It was a great concept. I'd like more of this. If nothing else, I'd like to continue to partake in free handouts like that. Uh, strangely, when even when I was completely focused on stock trading, the more I concentrated, the more another part of me started waking up. It felt like I had two personalities within me. When I sighed after completing my trades, it really did feel like I had logged out of the world of the net. It was the feeling of the two halves of me joining back into one. In the warp speed pace of stock trading, it was like the brakes were hit as gravity and time returned back to normal. It wasn't all that bad a feeling. It wasn't all that bad, at least, until I reevaluated the results of today's trades. I'd been glued to the screen since morning without stopping to eat or drink and I was up over 7,000 mules for the day. If there were smooth days, things would go the way they did today and continue at this pace. It'd be nerve-wracking calculating how things would go from last week. I could feel the fatigue in my body as I fell over from my cross-leg position and lay down. Only in this moment was my mind blank. Even in my dreams, I'd be handling financial transactions, so this moment was probably more relaxing than when I was sleeping. Even the most effective leaders on Earth, holding on to their hegemony, were said to spend anywhere from a few minutes to a maximum of an hour sleeping. I was very aware of this. If I were to plan my conquest of the world, it would be unfathomable to waste time sleeping. After all, someone somewhere in the world was working continuing to affect some change. Hence, sleeping meant to slip a small fraction from the forefront. Even for the goal of conquering the stock market, I had to partition out the limits of my brain capacity, thus total control was still a far-out concept. However, one day I'll conquer the market, extract endless amounts of money from it, and pile it all together to reach out and journey to undiscovered lands, opening the door to the next destination for mankind after the moon. It was like a stop. It was like I stopped my brain cells from relaxing and filled my disconnected brain with a new, seething blood flow. Blood flow. I took a deep breath and opened my eyes, ready to get up in one motion. What stopped my movements and its tracks, along with my thought processes, was purely an accident. When I opened my eyes, everything in front of me was all pitch black. No. Or rather, it was a pitch black cloth. One part of it had a unique and continuous contour to it, while another part appeared to be zigzagging layers of pleats. And beyond that, I could see through a break in the black fabric of what appeared to be some sort of white fabric. It passed nimbly over my head. What came next into my vision was Hagana's face, as if she noticed something suddenly and turned around. Why did you open your eyes? Are you an idiot? Those were my those were words that didn't seem out of place, even if you appended it with that. She wasn't acting shy or embarrassed, and apparently she wasn't even angry. Instead, Hagana looked disdainfully at me. It was probably a bad idea to have lain down to rest right along the shortest path to the kitchen from the living room. But even then, shouldn't Hagana be more careful wearing something as defenseless as a skirt? Besides, her lack of shame would make even mannequins look inhibited. Just thinking of that made any advantage to the situation a bit lacking. Hey, the dank knight. Welcome to the stream. And no, this is a visual novel, even though you don't see the visuals right now. It is much like Kairoa Shoujo or Fading Hearts. It is a visual novel, not a movie. Although, if you 
taken in your mind, in your mind it can be a movie, if you see it that way. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Without a doubt, finding any excitement in the contents of Hagana's skirt seemed rather like a losing proposition. I'd like to stay a rational person if possible. That's why I got up and returned to my computer screen. Where's Lisa? I heard Hagana's voice coming from her direction. She had a white mustache around her mouth after drinking milk, which certainly was quite a feat in nutritional intake and more amazing than the chemical synthesis that created it. Like I'd know. After having her make a fool out of me on top of having that idiotic white mustache on her face, I found myself rather irritated. At my rather short answer, Hagana showed her disapproval with a raised eyebrow. Haven't you been here the whole time? How don't you know? Are you an idiot? I started feeling like every sentence she spoke would have those words tagged silently onto the end. It was true that I'd been here the whole time, but I didn't notice her getting up and leaving me behind during my sleep concentration. I considered explaining that to her, but I found it to be so annoying that I just disregarded the thought. And in doing so, I heard the darnest thing from Hagana. Feh. I was surprised. In fact, you could say that if it, as, you could say that it was as if my brain shorted out. Well, for a brief moment, everything was blank. I turned around and just looked at Hagana with a what expression on my face. Hagana looked back at me without any expression on hers, seemingly saying that I was nothing but useless garbage. No matter how much of an effort I was making at being a gentleman, I realized that I was reaching my limit with her. There was no way this absolutely cheeky girl was going to behave. The circuits in my head shifted gears, switching on the adrenaline. My arms and legs seemed to have magically become supple. I swear, if she said even another word, I was going to tackle her to the ground. When it came to inflicting pain without leaving any marks on the face or body, I happened to know a thing or two, a thing or two about that. I learned a lot from Eastern European immigrants who came from unstable countries where the secret police were in full force. I tried some of those techniques on myself and I experienced hell. Oh, <laughs> Aww, I'm sorry, Omega. The only thought in my mind was the delusion of seeing Hagana's cheeky face streak with tears, begging for forgiveness. It would be good for Hagana to lift up the lid to the abyss of hell. That would teach her. And as I started, as I stared at Hagana with an icy glare, something happened that inhibited my range. I'm back. Lisa returned through a door in the corridor that probably led to the church proper. In her hand was a burlap bat filled to the brim with all sorts of things. It was a city policy to reuse anything that was usable as much as possible. This led me to believe that her burlap bab was certainly an example of that, given all the multiple patch marks on it. Hmm? As soon as she, en as soon as she entered the living room, Lisa seemed to sense what was going on. Or rather, it would have been obvious even to an idiot, what with Hagana silently staring daggers at me. I paid Hagana no attention at all as I turned my attention back to the computer screen. Hagana? When Lisa called her name, Hagana turned to her like a dog to its owner. You'll kill off brain cells if you stay angry like that. The heck was that? I looked up and all of all things saw Hagana not in agreement. Are you so easily convinced by something said to trick children? As I looked on, dumbfounded, Hagana seemed to have given up dealing with me and proceeded to rub her fingers along her forehead. And then she closed her eyes, skillfully pouring milk into her cup and had a second drink. Before she went drank it, she went through this mantra. Calcium appeases anger. Exactly. It didn't seem like she was trying to pull a fast one, but I was stumped as to whether this was all a ploy or not. The only thing I knew, well, knew was that Hagana hated my guts. I was sure that bit about calcium was a snipe remark at me. It wasn't so much that her anger had subsided as it was expressed in a different manner. Hagana finished her milk, then watched Lisa throw her groceries into the refrigerator. Lisa? Auditorium key. Huh? Oh, wait, wrong person. Lisa? Auditorium key. Huh? Oh, didn't I give it to you? 
You didn't give it to me, and I also checked everywhere just in case. The only other possibility was that Lisa still had it, or he stole- Oh, right. Hold on a minute. Um... With expert skill, and before Hagana even lifted a finger to point at me, Lisa went into action, searching her pockets and burlap bag. It was apparently hidden away in her wallet. <laughs> this always happens when I make a habit of putting slim items in my wallet. Will you have enough time? Even if I'm late, I will have to precisely explain everything. The fact that it was Lisa's fault, not mine. She said it without skipping even a beat. It was something that one it wasn't something one would be happy about, but as Lisa was unfazed by her words, it looked like this was fairly normal. If that's true, well, you better explain my screw-up clearly, then. Yes, a simple reason. Hagana said that as she took the key and turned away. The hem of her skirt turned slightly in sync with the graceful movement of her long, beautiful black hair. Her footsteps faded as she left the living room, and I could hear the door to her room close. Left there, Lisa sighed with relief and then let out a strained laugh as she looked at me. Soon after she closed her door, I heard it open and close again as Hagana returned to the living room, and her hand was a small black bag. I'll be on my way. All right, see you later. Hagana only talked to Lisa, and without a single word to me, she left through the hallway. Rather, her cold, or rather, her cold glance at me seemed to say, Oh my! Are you still there? It would appear that Hagana had identified me unconditionally as her enemy. She really is a bit of a tough girl to deal with. It seemed that Lisa's mutterings weren't calling me out as being at fault, but rather her were somewhat supportive of me. A bit? Those were the first words out of my mouth. Just a bit. She's really, she really is a good girl. Is that just the standard line to say for someone that has issues? Lisa put a hand on her cheek as she looked down with a somewhat cold expression in her eyes. I'm not someone so old-hearted like you, I would think. Okay, already. You don't need to be angry. Mm-hmm. That's better. Lisa smiled from ear to ear as, her f as she folded her empty bag carefully. Well, what should I do? Did you want to have dinner earlier? Huh? I gruffly retorted at a question I wasn't expecting. You couldn't really skip out on lunches now, could you? In fact, you didn't even really answer my question at all. What have you been doing? Judging by her surprised face, I could see that she wasn't trying to cross-examine me. I scratched my head and just mumbled a response. That's fine. I'm going to make dinner, but what do you want to do? Do you want to eat it here? Of course, it is cheaper than eating out. But I make no guarantees about the taste. You, you'd you better not make such bad jokes, I wanted to respond instinctively. But going out now to find a place for food was just as much of a pain. If nothing else, I didn't have many qualms about that either. And if you're offering food, then here is fine. I don't want to deal with the cops anyway. As long as it isn't poisonous, I'm fine with it. Not a problem, but if you want to eat now, I'll start cooking. Cooking. Well? Huh? Well, wouldn't it be a pain to have a cook have to cook multiple times? That is true, but, well, that's a surprise. Didn't think you'd be concerned. I might have ran away from home, but that doesn't mean I'm some sort of uncivilized delinquent. Lisa lightly sighed at my insistence. Those words sound like those of a common thug. Oh, shut up. Regardless of whether I cook now or later, I'm just letting you know that Hagana will be home late. Actually, when I'm not watching out for her, she doesn't properly feed herself, so I was planning on eating with her. However, after seeing what happened earlier, I kind of wonder if you're the same as well. It would appear that there is some great animosity towards... It would appear that there was some great animosity towards me from Hagana. I had no idea what got gotten her panties in a bunch. Did I cop a feel the first time I met her? I don't really remember it at all, but she didn't really have much to cop a feel from as far as I could tell. Of course, it is my intention for all of us to sit at the dinner table in friendship. <coughs> that came out of my mouth without thinking. Such a calm, pacifist opinion isn't what I want to hear. Well, a ball that falls to the ground hits with the most force at impact, but things eventually subside, do they not? 
Such approaches solve many a problem. Man, this thing is full of wisdom. I, I apologize for that. And those who are watching via YouTube, I'm sorry. But this game has so much wisdom in it right now. Just so much wisdom. So much so that it actually helped me with Indy earlier today. <laughs> and I've only been playing it for two days. So much wisdom right here. All coming from this character. I love it. I really do. Well, a ball that falls to the ground hits with the most force at the impact. But things eventually subside, do they not? Such approaches solve many a problem. By my personal philosophy, I wanted to protest, but I felt relieved somehow. I was thinking it was something like shaking hands as a way of reconciliation. Mm hmm, that would be fine too. Believe it or not, I look at things pragmatically. That would be a big help. After I said that, I took a deep breath and returned to the subject at hand. I wouldn't mind eating earlier. Well, all right, let's get to it then. Thank you. At my sudden politeness, politeness, Lisa giggled to herself like a spoiled brat. Out came bean soup, fish mo- I'm pretty sure that's a French word. I, I'm almost positive it looks like it could be French. French, that word, and bread. The beans were grown by a neighbor. The fish was a type of trout that was shared from a bunch, bunch fished out of a canal around the town, and the bread was cheap leftovers from the bakery, apparently. I thought they might have been leftovers, or maybe even poisonous, but it all tasted so good that I was left stunned. So, how much is this going to run me? Yeah, that word, Omega. I, 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 it just looks like it. It just looks like it. I didn't know if it was. To be honest, I forgot you were French there for a second. Well, French Canadian. <laughs> I forgot I had a French Canadian in there who could tell me if the word was French or not. I asked Lisa as I was, as she was making tea. She gave me a bit of a grim look. Perhaps she didn't like talking about money. Roughly ten mules a day. Isn't that a bit much? I imagine she didn't go out to eat often. It went without saying that the exchange rate for mule was fairly high, so imports from Earth were rather cheap. Lunar City imports a lot. Im Lunar cities import a lot of daily essentials, so the effects of the exchange rate were rather obvious. Okay, it does look like a French word, but you don't know the word, if that is the case. Okay, I see. No problems. At least I can recognize when a word looks French. It may not be French, but at least I can recognize when it looks like it. Anyway, it went without saying that the exchange rate for mule was fairly high, so imports from Earth were rather cheap. The lunar cities import a lot of daily essentials, so the effects of the exchange rate were quite obvious. To Lisa with dissatisfaction, Lisa answered back with a serious face. This includes the lodging. You could have said that earlier. Well, when it comes to money matters, you're to the point, aren't you? It seemed that she was trying to test me. With that, she handed me a cup of tea, but it wasn't the green tea I was used to drinking back home. It was a type of Chinese tea that used fermented tea leaves, but the name wasn't coming to me. Jasmine? I don't know. Of course, it's not like I'm having any fun running away from home only to return when I'm out of money, you know? Hmm? But won't things get worse at this rate? Even if your conviction is strong, what will you do from here? So that's what this was all about. I got it now. Though I can put you up, we aren't exactly financially well off here, as you can see around you. If you run out of money, well, we won't be able to support you. Basically, I'm going to need to work for my meals, right? Exactly. The motto of our church is everyone has a responsibility. 
A theologian a millennium ago said that manual labor is sacred. I replied immediately, I have no objections. Oh, how honest. Obviously. In that case, I can introduce you to a variety of jobs. What would you be interested in? Huh? While I was out shopping, I gathered together some information here and there. There are people I've known for a long time, so I can trust them. They are people who've come from hardships, so people like you, well, you can understand. In any case, it seems a lot of them are shorthanded. Would you be interested in working in the kitchen, delivery, construction, cleaning? Lisa sm smiled from the other end of the table. Wait, weren't all of these low-wage jobs for unskilled laborers? I reached out for a neglected piece of bread when my hand was slapped slightly. You know the saying, if man will not work, he shall not eat. How much will I make at each of those four jobs anyway? Well, the highest would be for delivery. I've been told that you can earn nine mules an hour for it. I'm not sure what kind of expression I had on my face, but whatever it was, it wasn't good. Lisa reacted accordingly. Do you have a problem with it? It's nine mules. It is true that you'll have to do deliveries to places for, of different distances, but you do have a surprising amount of endurance. Ooh, let's see here, let me read the chat over here. If you're watching via YouTube, the chat that I'm talking about is a chat in my channel, www.twitch.tv slash Lolinia. Now, I know that usually most YouTube videos aren't talking directly to the viewers, at least not the ones that I've seen. But I'd like to think of you people as my viewers as well. So if you're watching, feel free to stop in the chat at any point in time. Uh, there should be a little thing telling you if I'm live or not, if you're watching this video. So if I'm live on, on Twitch, feel free to come by and say, Hey, I was watching your video. Be nice. But let me le read things in the chat here. Let's see here. It is a French word, yes, but, but it's specific to a rustic method of cooking fish. It's literally Miller's wife. Hmm. We didn't know that, Crimson. Guess we learn thing, new things each day. We guess we learn things each new days. Yes, we do learn new things each day. That is true. Anyway, let me get back to the game here. The people on YouTube probably do not want me to keep continuing with the chat conversation at this point. <laughs> do you have a problem with it? It's nine mules. It is true that you will have that you will have to do deliveries to places of different distances, but you do have a surprising amount of endurance. It might have been fine with the well-laid-out green city in Newton City, but it made me shiver to think about making deliveries in the mess that was the outer sections. Nine mules an hour only amounted to about 100 mules a day. Uh, the rate of earnings here was pretty low, given the fact that I'd earned over 10,000 mules at my best in a week. This was out of the question. Besides, it will have to be done in the daytime, wouldn't it? Of course. She stuffed that precarious piece of bread down her throat as she looked menacingly at me. This isn't a job for kids, you know. Or is that your intention? No, that's not it. Then what? Just wanted to say it was say it isn't something worth it for me to do. After that, Lisa opened her mouth as if to say something, but I didn't really want to have an argument about it, so I reached into my pocket, and I produced some cash that was bundled separately from my wallet. Of course, I kept it for a specific purpose or for some shopping, but it wasn't really a large amount of money. I took the largest notes from the bundle and placed two bills on the table. In any case, here's 200 mules, so please let me stay here for 20 days. Honestly, if you kick me out, that would be troublesome. Besides, if you took a gun out of the picture, this rather cozy place was dirt cheap for 10 mules a day. For one evening, Big Bull Cafe costed 15 mules. Food was extra, and you never knew when the cops would come strolling in. There wasn't any security in the booths either. Staying here 20 days for 200 mules wasn't a bad investment at all. I looked at me, Lisa. When I did so, Lisa was looking at the 200 mule notes I placed before her. Is that okay? 
When I asked her, Lisa was taken aback as she looked at me. Hmm? R right. I, of course, I wouldn't kick you out, but... I was a bit concerned about her change in expression. Maybe she thought they were counterfeit? It isn't dirty money or anything. At my words, Lisa looked a bit flustered as she shook her head. I'm sorry, it, it isn't that. Then what was it? Or at least that was what I was tempted to say, but given the circumstances, I said nothing. Besides, we'd already deviated from talking about those crappy jobs, so I did want to put an end to this discussion. If there isn't any problem, I'd like for you to take it. I also don't want you to bother me for these 20 days. In my mind, I wanted to add those words, but my face didn't reflect that. Just to make sure, I had some bean soup and helped myself to some bread. Lisa looked confused, but then she sighed and nodded her head slowly. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, for a brief moment, things proceeded smoothly under this roof. Then, right after I could finally breathe a sigh of relief. But what will you do after this? This woman was persistent. I couldn't hide my displeasure as my poker face cracked. I turned to Lisa and could think of only one thing to say. Let me think about it 20 days from now. This wasn't going to fly, was it? I looked at Lisa, but it seemed like she had given up. I'm not one to talk in this case, I suppose. Huh? Oh, nothing. But you really should think about what you'll do after these 20 days. A lifetime is long, and you'll be surprised at how even something like breathing in this city will cost you something. R right. Even though she'd get angry talking about money, those words she said were particularly powerful. Well, perhaps she hated money because she didn't have much? For some reason, that seemed unlikely. I finished up the remaining French word we just talked about and sopped up the rest of the soup in my bowl with some bread. Lisa took the two banknotes that I gave her and placed them in a small accessory box hidden away in the corner of a shelf filled with cookware. It's not like she was a kid stealing some pocket money, but seeing Lisa like this led me to believe that perhaps she had her head in the clouds at this moment. My impression of Lisa was that of an annoying and stupid woman but at the same time, she was a mature woman who surprisingly had both feet planted firmly on the ground. This was a bit different from before. I could only think of her as being unreliable and airheaded. I wonder why. I was a bit curious, but everyone had their circumstances. And after reevaluating, something else came to my came to mind to ask. Hey. Eh? Yes. She looked like she snapped her senses as she looked up after closing her accessory case and turned to face me. What is it? You were talking about how everyone has to do their own job earlier, but does that mean even that girl works? It's Hagana, not that girl. Hey, she addressed me that way as well, you know. Can't you reach a compromise? Besides, she's mostly just shy towards other people. To me, she's a very good girl. Yesterday, it didn't look like she was listening to you, though. Uh, in any case, it's Hagana, okay? Hagana. I know, I know. Give me a break here. Jeez, we were talking about Hagana, right? Yeah, she works. Seriously? Totally serious. I bit my lip as she mimicked me. I got annoyed when she said that I sounded like a street thug, but to copy me like that was irritating. Stop trying to act tough, act tough and talk no- Ah, uh, tongue. Stop trying to act tough and talk normally. Be quiet, you. I retorted as if I didn't have anything else to say, as if I were a spoiled child. Even though it was unbearable, it seemed like I was no match for Lisa. But it is true, though. That girl is working as a teacher. What? I wasn't putting on airs. I was honestly surprised. Mouth agape, I looked at Lisa and repeated, Teacher? That? Yep. That girl is very smart, after all. Well, 
It is true that she rather looks down on others. On that, it is true that I can't deny that I cannot deny it, but in a way, she's already had that look in her eyes. It bothers her sometimes as well, so please don't get too mad at her for that, okay? <sighs> I gave a snort of laughter and turned away. I wasn't laughing at her expense, just thinking about how Hagana was self-conscious of her appearance tugged at my heartstrings a bit. That was somewhat cute. As she gathers up the neighborhood children and teaches them, she really looks, she really works hard. Huh, <laughs> tongue, she really works hard. I used to do something like that in the past, but I wasn't good at it. If it is about the social sciences, then I can handle it, but there isn't exactly demand for that. Huh? Is that so? Hagana specializes in the sciences. She's especially good with math. It's good to have knowledge in what is useful in the world. I attended university here on the moon, you know. But my major was on Catholicism in, mid in medieval Europe and its relation to aboriginal religion. What the heck is that? But yeah, there isn't anyone in the moon who would be interested in studying earth history, much less religious history. Even the university professor that had come here to take charge of the curriculum had to earnestly beg me to keep the research going, which was a bit of a shock. Well, if you're going to pay for classes, then definitely math or physics. Or if you even have more money than chemistry or biology, though medical school is a different matter. In any case, I am well aware of this. Exactly. I heard all the time that if not for money, then there is nothing to study. It's a deplorable situation. I didn't know whether or not it was that deplorable, but the only problem was that Lisa had chosen to live her life on the moon. In order to succeed on the moon, there was no time to study literature or science or history. Or literature or history. It would be better to major in math-heavy scientific fields or focus on economics or management if one were not scientifically inclined. But if Lisa were to have any regrets over that, they would be pretty minuscule. I was able to trust her because somehow it did appear that she had her feet planted firmly on the ground. However, that girl as a teacher though I mumbled to myself as I tried to visualize it and her all black get up looking down on others with her eyes and words as she taught from the podium asking why the students didn't understand what was simple to her if there was a demand for situations like that I'd certainly never heard about them for someone with a short fuse like Agana to have a bunch of bratty little animals as her students I questioned whether or not that was really a good idea any infractions would get a warning the first time, but the second time around, she'd smack them with a stick without saying another word. It was so fitting that it was scary. I kind of know what you're thinking. Well, who wouldn't hate a teacher like that? Now that you mention it, the children get along rather well with her. Lisa said it quietly as if she were telling me a secret. It appeared that Lisa didn't actually think they got along. Well has been an in well has been an integral t it has been an integral part of supporting this church she hands me all of her earnings you know even though the lord warns against greed he doesn't wish for extreme poverty either i don't really get it but i understand that appearances can be deceiving that's right if i were to make decisions just on appearances then i wouldn't have come to your aid <laughs> whatever thanks for the meal I'll say that it didn't taste half bad. My, really? But Hagana doesn't really like it that much. As I stood up from my chair, something came to mind. Maybe you put a bit too much seasoning in there? I prefer stronger flavors, so it's fine for me, but... Eh? Really? My folks are manual laborers, and they always prepare these ridiculously strong, so it's a lot like that. Lisa had one hand on the table and the other clutching her forehead. You could say that it was something of a blind spot. I got it. Thanks. The pasta at the Big Bull Cafe mixes salt and garlic very well and tastes pretty good, by the way. Lisa looked up at the ceiling as if to utter a prayer or something. I shrugged and opened up the computer sitting on the coffee table in front of the sofa and returned to looking for moneymakers. 
And with that, I'm going to take a quick break. Quick break. Uh, if you're, uh... So, let me just pause myself right quick. I'm going to add another be right back screen. So I can just do that and make that right quick. I'll talk to you while I do that. Be right back screen. There we go. Add an image source. Image. IAST. Go down here and get the Indie Army Stream Team. There we go. <clears throat> then go here and add another source. Yeah, another image. I named that AGN. I do apologize for the people on YouTube, but I am not an editor. <laughs> I am not an editor, so. See you later, Materion. Have a great night and a good sleep. Let's see here. Panel for AGN. Let's see here. Okay. Then add the last image. All right. Into graphics. There we go. There we go. And I will be right back.
right, I am back. I am back. Yes, I am. So, let's get this started, as you matter. And with this, I'm going to say, I'm going to actually add another scene. Add scene, there we go. That you will see again later on. And why will you see it again later on? Plenty of reasons. You'll, you'll, you'll know in a second here. Okay, there we go. Let's go over here. And bam. That is the reason why. I am not ending. I am just adding the things already. Let's see here. IAST. And go here and add this. There we go. That's there. Oop. My apologies. There we go. And add one more. Image. Name that AGN. Okay. Go down here, add this, and boop. There we go. You going to Omega? Hope you have a great night. Or were you just saying bye to, Ome to uh, Materion? Either way, good night. Okay, there we go. There we go. Oh, no, not now. Okay. And back to the game here. Minimize that. And there we go. There we go. The moon had low gravity, so it was common to utilize a spring when doing any weight training. A rod and coil made for that purpose had been sold online and was rather and was a rather popular product. However, it was questionable how many who bought it actually used it. After all, the fitness company who made a fortune selling sets of rods and coils had managed to sell over three million sets, including similar items. But no matter how you looked at it, any single set would have been more than sufficient. In fact, the population on the moon was about 700,000 people, although tourists would send that number up to a million. There were many people out there who would buy it and not use it, knowing that a new model was on the way. Even if the equipment was used properly, there was the matter of using it for more difficult applications, and then the user manual would neglect to note this. The words of my stubborn old-fashioned father were repeated in my head as I did weight training. With weights on my arms, shoulders, backs, and abs, I would do absolute I would do balance training involving headstands and light somersaults, which would go on for no more than twenty minutes. Since I wasn't aiming to be an athlete, any training beyond that wasn't really necessary. If nothing else, the people who came from the town my folks were from, the kind who could never tell a lie, would all say in unison to take care of the body, for it will always be useful. With the height of net prosperity and the lower gravity and the near unlimited supply of electrical power on the moon, physical labor was categorized as being the lowest of the low in terms of recognition. 
there weren't any people who had made it big with physical labor. At best, there was always the consideration of those who worked in show business. Then the ones who got paid the big money weren't the actors who toiled away in the craft, but the people who managed them. However, after leaving home and taking the time to observe things outside of the boundaries of the rules of society, I had come to understand that there was a lot of truth in those words. Even after evading the police, sent me to bring sent police sent to bring me back home. I expected of those seasoned. F okay, readers. Even after evading the police sent to bring me back home, I realized that there was some useful advice to be had. As expected of these of those seasoned veterans who escaped from the jaws of guerrilla fighters, secret police, and military juntas. I wiped the sweat off with a pat towel and put on my clothes. The same clothes Lisa and Hagana were complaining about before. After two washes, I probably finally got rid of the smell. But I had a feeling that I had washed away something like an important mark of readiness that had been stained into the clothing in the last three months. The one thing I had become aware of after leaving home was that people were relaxed by the smell of detergent. The word cleanliness had a rather weak image. Then again, this wasn't half bad. I stretched my back and tossed my rucksack over my shoulder. Since today was Sunday, the trading houses were closed, so it was an important day for me, as I could go out and just walk around. It also appeared that the culprit from the theft was arrested so the odds of being mistakenly arrested and taken home had diminished. It was kissed as least it was just as Lisa suspected. The culprit was a young man who had also run away from home. Leaving home without any means, turning to a life of crime and causing troubles for others, this guy was clearly the typical idiot. It's possible that he wasn't from Earth, but was born and raised on the moon. As someone born and raised on the moon myself, I could sympathize. But for people from Earth, it seemed that the lower gravity was to blame for making many people lightheaded. Aside from issues of pride, many could live on the collect collected scraps left over from the geniuses and prodigies of Newton City who had amassed great fortunes. Some would say that it was the fault of this sense of security, perhaps. Compared to the people who came to the moon from Earth, within the groups of tourists were also those who came here with some great sense of purpose. They came to the moon to do something or another. It could be that they came to find a tranquil life they couldn't find back on Earth. Likewise, they might have come to find a thrilling life that couldn't be found back on Earth. After all, I understood that one must step forward when one had a purpose at hand. Anyway, the cost to take the orbital elevator by any legal means was staggering, and there were many hurdles to clear if you, weren't, if you were to look for any discounts or exemptions. In any case, there were many Earth dogs who knew where they came from, where they were, and what they should be doing. Literally, there was Earth on the bottom of their shoes. That's why I hated these Earth dogs. I tied my shoes and left through the hallway. The place was eerily quiet. Lisa had headed out to the had headed out to the restaurant after eating breakfast. I knew that Hagana was still here, but outside of going to the toilet, she would seclude herself in her room. You couldn't hear a peep coming out of there. Had no idea what she was doing in there, but I got eerie vibes from there. That was why I had everything I owned in my backpack. I wouldn't be surprised if Hagana took a PC to my took a hammer <laughs> took a PC to my hammer. Took a hammer to my PC and destroyed it while I was out. Thus, I did not continue walking down the corridor towards the living room. Instead, I went up the stairs to the second, to the second floor. The church was in a low-income area, much like everything else around, but it was built upon parts of a crater that had been partially zoned, so navigating the sector was a bit complex. The entrance to the sector was along a relatively wide street, but the second and third floor portions seemed to cling to the cliffs as they stretched upwards. According to Lisa, these places weren't very well off financially. The faded parts of buildings here and there around the church were obvious, but they appeared neither small nor expensive. Ascending the narrow steps took you to two rooms that looked out on a small yard from which you could see the Sky Park. As they were both on a slant, 
The rooms themselves were small, one of them apparently Lisa's. There was a white painted chair and table in the small garden, and if you were to ascend the stairs another level, they became more like a ladder. What, what functioned as a handrail was actually what Lisa used to carry a basket of laundry. There was a room, or rather a storage shed, on the third floor, and past that you could reach a site near the roof. The door was wooden, but there was there, but there was, there was, there was an on it. The, but there was a note on it with a. I guess there was a lock on it with a handwritten note from Lisa that said to always lock the door when leaving. I was sure people hadn't been locked out many times. I, of course, would be returning through the front entrance, and with that, I headed out. The moon was in the middle of the two week long afternoon and the light that permeated the dome over this lunar city during this time felt rather good. Today I could see Earth from the usual place. This yard had something of an extravagant feel to it, with a large tree growing very close to a cliff behind it. I wondered if the placement of the table and chair were so Lisa and Hagana could enjoy the shade of the tree. The cliffs all around gave the place a feeling of isolation. It was a nice place. Right now, there was only the noise of the laundry machine, and it was clear what belonged to whom. Looking over the jumble of streets of the sixth outer station, section, you could see someone on the roof casually reading something on a computer terminal, and someone repairing a roof. You could see bakeries and a dry cleaner, buildings spewing out water vapor from misshapen chimneys and homes under construction. However, my objective wasn't to survey that area. It would be nice to scale the cliff in the back and roam around the plateau above, but I'd probably end up on someone's property and they'd call the cops on me. I moved nimbly between the houses seen from the park, and having found a continuation of the path towards the top of the plateau, broke into a run as I left the park. What was before me was what I had seen from the park. Before me were the buildings of Newton City that pointed in the direction of Earth. I left the 6th Outer Section's business district and got on board the rather boringly named Lunar Development Train. It literally was a train from the time the lunar surface was being developed, developed, and at the station's starting point and terminus, there was a diorama of an individual in a spaceship in a spacesuit doing work in the lunar desert. No matter how much you could visit it virtually on the net, tourists still flocked to the diorama as if showing some different deference of gratitude as they took pictures of it. Once, someone had the bright idea of making an incision in it to accommodate a box so tourists would make, mistake it for a donation box. Supposedly, it was filled to the brim with coins. However, what that guy failed to realize was that after only a few hours, the foolish tourist would have filled the box with donations. Then they would complain to the station attendant that they couldn't put any more in, thus the plan was foiled. After that, capitalizing on that idiot's bright idea, the station attendants installed a large, unmarked box to collect small change from tourists. This was a classic example of a moment of carelessness toppling even a good get-rich scheme. There wasn't a lot of living space on the moon, so the lunar development train seemed almost almost seemed to apologize as it shrank down and sped through the city. The train passed alongside the chaotic mismatch of buildings, and for a brief moment it was possible to look out the window to see the lives, see into the lives of the people inside. The tourists looked great amu took great amusement seeing their own country's culturally styled buildings and lifestyles. Of course, there were no cultural aspects I particularly saw that amused me at all. The moon was made up of a hodgepodge of immigrants. On top of that, it was a place where people could, couldn't, sh where people who couldn't shake off Earth's gravity gathered. So the coloring was always too pale. That was why one could say that the line performed so well. Even those from my hometown who hoped to accomplish something would resolutely look coldly at all this. This was the moon, after all, not Earth. As we passed each station, the townscape changed accordingly. 
From a chaotic atmosphere to orderly streets, the stateless nature of the place became more evident. Buildings both straight and with elegant curves did, that did not exist in the natural world multiplied as perfectly trimmed trees grew in number. We had entered the White Belt. There were many advertisements from within the train directed at the typical salarymen, with information on insurance for families. Again, the ground gradually lowered and the train slowly separated from it. The beautiful cityscape unfolded below, and soon we were traveling at a height equal to that of a ten-story building. No matter how beautiful the building was, there would still be provisions for the many complexities in life, as one would expect. Everywhere you looked, the green of parks could be seen, and one could look down to see large canals. In contrast, far in the distance, one could see the chaotic town of Red Valley. I was oppressed that they would dare come up with names like White Belt and Red Valley. As I thought about it, the train suddenly picked up a burst of speed. Along the streets below, all that could be seen were residential and commercial buildings, like a district of coal buildings. Now that we'd reach a height of twenty stories, we'd st we stopped being able to see the tops of buildings passing by. Beyond the glass windows, one could see the busy salarymen as electronic billboards started to flood the view. Before long, as if the train were right into a thick forest, we were covered in shadows, and vision was reduced greatly for a moment. The train continued to navigate through groups of nearby buildings by going around them, and suddenly my vision cleared up again. This was the large plaza before the Newton City Central Station. The vastness of the gigantic atrium would amaze not only travelers from Earth, but even those raised on the moon. At, six, at 162 meters above ground, nanowires held up a massive clock and hologram screen right in midair. The train continued along the side of the large plaza and was eventually swallowed up within the terminal station. It, like Lunar City, could be considered a gathering of the highest levels of wealth and honor for mankind. I got off the train and counted the number of advertisements that came into view. There were three from nanotech companies, four from major software corporations, two from biotech firms, two from insurance companies, and six from banks. And then there were five from investment banks. Each and every one of them was famous for their rate of earnings and prideful of their proceeds and they had the task of sweeping up all the proceeds from the wealth on Earth and pumping it into this lunar city. Listing the world's companies in order of market cap, within the top 100 companies, 37 of them were on the moon. It's more than one would find in London or New York. And the number of companies abandoning Earth and setting up their main offices here were great, and the number that wanted to strike it big was even greater. New Frontiers gathered up the brightest of folks, and in this era, and in this era, as long as you had a talented mind and a net connection, you could come out on top. The moon was different from the earth, where everything the eye could see had been developed owning to a long history, and old geezers wielded immense power sitting high upon their thrones. Some random country couldn't monopolize power here, and because of the nuclear crisis, countries everywhere shied away from the bomb. Thus, the moon was literally an empty place with no external annoyances. Even placing second or third in a race to come here would still be more than enough for someone to become a key figure in the city. Though their footprints were no longer displayed along with the others in the Sea of Tranquility Memorial Hall, without a doubt they stood on the forefront of humanity. For example, there was a bronze bust in front of the central entrance of Central City. Central city. The model of this overly serious faced statue that seems to look down on pedestrians was E.J. Rockberg. A who people said would have simply ended up as an excellent banker had he stayed on Earth. Right now, he was the CEO of a top-class investment bank here on the moon. At merely 29, he got involved in investing in the lunar development train. In those days, he worked vigorously in lunar development, which few people regarded with much interest, as he gambled upon mankind's career and everything he had. That got the ball rolling. That got the ball rolling. On Earth, stories were told about how he built the city from nothing, although many key figures would say that very few people understood what that really meant. It's just that they rode the wave well, they said. I supported these sentiments, even though everyone knew that how they all approached it was less than ideal. At any rate, 
Even though my parents came to the moon at the same time that E.J. Rockberg did, it was evident in the difference in income levels. They worked at leveling the rock to put in soil for growing and harvesting crops. Was that not a job from trillions of years before? And on that note, it would have been easier to have just done that back on Earth. That was why I made sure to remind myself of this sometimes by coming all the way out to Newton City by train. Particularly, it was a place that those with little training or education would oftentimes find their big breaks in the city. If you left the station and headed in the opposite direction of the plaza, right before your eyes was a path on the right hand showing the towering building of the lunar government. Among the many glass-filled buildings in Newton City, there were of many that were built using a material cut from dark rock. Because of that, they looked plain at first glance. But in my opinion, it is something that gives off an intimidating air, like something with an unequally powerful gravitational pull. That was the financial district, where banks and investment banks set up shop. Pointing to the street was a simple sign that said Schrodinger Street. And there, next to it, was the bronze statue of a small cat. <clears throat> and with this, I'm actually going to cut out for the night, because my voice is starting to go out, badly. I do apologize for that, so let me save. If you're watching via YouTube, I also apologize to you for the very short cut in video. I'll just save here. And I want to thank everybody for coming out. I really do. <clears throat> and uh, let's drop a raid on somebody. Let's see here. I'm going to open up the channels that I am following. Channels I follow. Let's see who's there. Who is playing? I know. Let's drop a raid. Let's drop a raid on. Uh, let's see. He's got plenty of viewers. They've got plenty of viewers. Let's drop a raid on Jack LaFear. Drop a raid on him. We're going to go here. Boop. Now, when I say drop a raid, that means we're going to go here. And we're going to go to this person's channel. And we're going to say Lolly Legion Late Night Raid. Lolly Legion Late Night Raid. And I bid you all a fair good night.